Hey, thanks, Sam, and welcome, everybody. We're here today to talk about calculating points and fees. And, you know, this is something that bankers have been doing for several years now because the uh, points and fees test in the high-cost slash HOEPA slash Section 32 mortgages, and I'll refer to those just as high-cost mortgages from now on. You had two triggers for coverage under that rule. One was a rate test, and the second one was points and fees. But frankly, the vast majority of financial institutions didn't make loans that tripped the trigger for coverage under that regulation. So points and fees was something that didn't factor into their daily compliance life. But now things are changing. And what is changing is what constitutes points and fees and also the scope of coverage of the high-cost mortgage rules is being expanded. So even open-end credit will be covered. Previously, it was just closed-end credit secured by a principal dwelling, and there was a an exception for residential mortgage transactions. Now both closed-end and open-end consumer credit transactions secured by a consumer's principal dwelling will be covered, and they've taken away half of the exception for residential mortgage transactions. Uh, beginning in January, loans to purchase a principal residence will not be exempt from the rule. So in addition to that, you've got your high-cost mortgage stuff. Points and fees have become vitally important because of the new ability to repay rules. And uh, of great concern is the number that's used to determine whether a transaction is compliant with the new fee caps that are associated with six of the seven ability to repay options that you're going to want to strive for in order to demonstrate that you are in compliance with the rules. So you've got a difference in what constitutes points and fees. You've got uh, changes to the points and fees triggers for high-cost mortgages that are also changing, so more loans will end up triggering coverage, and uh, the threshold is actually being lowered, and that's why you're going to have more loans that are covered. And in addition to that, you're going to be reporting points and fees information on the Humdalar. So if you go over to page two, let's talk about what we're going to achieve in this webinar. We're going to go through what items are included in the calculation of points and fees and what you can exclude from that calculation. And then we'll go through and talk about how points and fees are utilized in the different tests, whether it's for coverage under the high-cost mortgage rules or whether it's for qualifying for different things like a qualified mortgage. Um, on the fee cap rules under the qualified mortgage standards, we're going to go through each of the different options that you have, the so-called standard mortgage rules. That's where you're refinancing a non-standard mortgage into a standard mortgage. The qualified mortgage, which gives you a safe harbor of compliance with the ability to repay rule. The special qualified mortgage rules, also known as the transitional or interim rules. The small credit portfolio loans, which is something they added at a later point in time that gives you another option, the temporary balloon payment qualified mortgage and the regular balloon payment qualified mortgage. Uh, with, the, with the small credit portfolio loans, the temporary balloon payment and the balloon payment, you get a rebuttable presumption of compliance with the ability to repay rule. So you have a lot of incentive to try to get a QM or one of these, these varieties of uh, QMs 
so that you have less litigation risk, less potential liability on your mortgage loans. The CFPB is the one spitting out all of these rules uh, in order to implement provisions in Dodd-Frank. They have a lot of information on their website. I was complaining to Jack earlier today because although the CFPB has come out with videos, small entity compliance guides, various charts, they haven't updated those as they have amended the regulations. So we had rules that came out in January. We've had amendments and clarifications to those rules since that time before the rules even take effect in the uh, first part of 2014. So if you look at the charts and the guides and videos on their site, you're only getting part of the picture. Everything we're talking about today is within subpart E of Reg Z, the special rules for certain home mortgage transaction with the information helping us coming from the commentary. So let's turn over to page four and start by laying the foundation with a discussion of the importance of the total points and fees and, and why you should care. As I mentioned just a little bit ago, it matters for purposes of the high cost mortgage rule. It matters because you're going to end up reporting points and fees information on the Humdalar. And the big deal is that this is going to factor in when you're trying to qualify for one of those options that establishes your compliance with the ability to repay rule. There are new fee caps that are built in that you cannot exceed if you want a qualified mortgage or one of the variants of that. Let's start by first talking about the high cost mortgage and how the coverage rules for those are changing effective in January last year. Previously, and I should say currently, there are two triggers. One is based on the rate and how the the APR compares to comparable treasury securities, and the second one is at points of fees. But beginning January of next year, there will be three triggers. One is a comparison of how to what extent the APR exceeds the APOR. The third is um, something that relates to a prepayment penalty. If you can charge a prepayment penalty more than 36 months after consummation or if at any time the prepayment penalty could exceed 2% of the amount prepaid, you're going to trigger a high-cost mortgage. But what we're concerned about is how the newly amended rule factors in points and fees. And you see in the middle of page four under uh, under the little uh, two little eyes that coverage under the high cost mortgage rule will be triggered if you have either an open end or closed end consumer credit transaction secured by a principal dwelling where uh, the total points and fees exceed a certain limit. Now they've divided it up into two categories. And the two categories relate to the total amount of the the loan. And one thing you need to take into consideration is the fact that it's a moving target. So initially, it will be divided into loans of 20000 or more for one category and loans of under 20000 for the other category, but that amount will be adjusted annually based on the consumer price index. Uh, so the test for a loan of $20,000 or more is do the total points and fees as defined in the reg, and, and the definition is changing effective in January, do they exceed 5% of the total loan amount for a transaction with a loan amount of 20000 or more? If you have a loan that's under 20000 then and again, that's going to be adjusted annually, uh, then the test is whether 
the total points and fees exceed the lesser of 8% of the total loan amount.